The first ever Global Africa Forum on Communication themed Speak for Africa held at the Kigali Convention Center in Rwanda. It featured seasoned speakers from across Africa and beyond, all of them suggesting solutions as to how Africa can best sell itself. The opening day featured a traditional performance by Rwandan troupe. And speakers such as Tebe Ikalafeng, founder Brand Leadership South Africa, who gave a keynote speech on new horizons for country branding, soft power, competitive identity and positioning. He emphasized that Africa must not wait for others to speak for it. Well, it's very important as, uh, as Africa to be able to tell our own story because if we don't tell our story, then our story will always be somebody else's view of who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the problems that we have as a continent is because we have not owned our own story, we have not owned our own narrative, and we've abdicated that responsibility to everybody else, and then we blame them when they're not telling a story the way we, we have. We are the only ones who know us better than we. The challenge for Africa has always been that we, we blame everybody but ourselves. Uh, that for us to move forward, we need to take responsibility, we need to be proactive, and we need to challenge all the other negative uh, stereotypes and, and narratives about the continent. Yes, we should tell our own story ourselves. There is a growing uh, sense of Afro-positivity from a long period of Afro-pessimism. You're seeing a lot of Africans embracing who they are, embracing their culture, dressing from their, from, uh, from their culture, speaking their language, eating their food, and celebrating that everywhere. The more we do that, the more we become conscious and the more and we shouldn't wait for the world to acknowledge us because one of the challenges that we always have is we want the world to say yes you're doing good then we accept that we're doing good we shouldn't wait for anybody else because we're good enough as we are other speakers on day one were richard kiplagat md east africa africa practice kenya who spoke on africa's reputation impact on local global business and investment attractiveness he noted that Africa's biggest challenge is that we don't study perception. Well, I think the first thing is that we need to accept that our perception and how we are perceived has an impact on our ability to attract foreign direct investment. And we've all agreed that we don't want to be a continent that is a perennial receiver of aid, but we want to grow on the basis of investment and trade. And it is clear that there are misconceptions about the continent that prevent um, decisions to deploy capital and to engage in business with the continent. Our biggest challenge, number one, is that we don't study perception. None of our countries have a, a concerted and a regular just a thermometer check of how am I perceived by my key investor audiences around the world mm. and within the continent mm -hmm. on both sides. And based on that, how can we then look at communicating and bridging the information gap a little bit better? How can we secondly, beyond just information, look at our attractiveness and look at what are we naturally endowed with and how can we uh, leverage our natural resources, our population, our location, and make sure people are aware of the reasons why we're an attractive investment destination. But also, can we do things around policy and taxes to make ourselves more attractive? Mm -hmm. uh, ease of doing business kind of things. And then finally, around um, confidence. And confidence is about consistency, it's about predictability, and it's about communicating very clearly what is your country's strategy and how can I as an investor plug into your strategy. If your vision is to be a tourist hub as a country, then and I know that you are that is a focus for your country, then as a tourism investor, I know that I'll be investing in something where there's you know global support from the leadership of that country. And so I think we need to start by understanding where we are and then making deliberate steps 
to deal with the three areas around awareness, attractiveness and confidence. Andrew Herwig, manager of 1000 Hills Distillery, Rwanda, a member of the panel discussing investments in Africa, said African countries need to search and find its unique potentials and build on them. Well, I think it's really just talk about what is the potential that's there. Um, for us at 1000 Hills Distillery, we came to Rwanda um, not only because of the rapid transformation last 25 years, because the big brands aren't looking here. There is a massive opportunity to really build a brand organically um, and really figure out what works, what doesn't work. And I think that's really what Africa needs to do is tell the story of that. There is an opportunity that you can't find anywhere else and it's unique per country. And I think that's what really needs to be done. It needs to be done in a clear, concise and, of course, a creative way. On branding Africa to the rest of the world, Wendy Clue, Group Head Communications and Branding Lumnin PLC South Africa, said that Africa needs to understand the global principles of branding in order to be able to sell itself. Understand what the principles of global branding are and how to package um, product services, um, A, for their own internal consumption, but also for sending it out into the world. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's something that's prevalent throughout the continent, though. So there's a lot of room and I think a lot of opportunity for young African entrepreneurs who have been in the branding game for some time, who have become experts or at least thought leaders in branding, to take the word forward and get to um, Africans across all different tiers to understand what branding is, but also the impact it has in terms of, um, I think, a unifying nations, but also creating value for themselves. Samira Salwani, international journalist in the UK, said the African media houses face financial challenges daily and are unable to pull their weight as is expected and thereby can't tell its story as it should. I think the big challenge faced by media houses on this continent is finances, it's funding, it's do we have the money to go after the big investigative stories, do we have the money to support those great pitches that come in in order to be able to pay journalists. I think that's the big one. And another one which I've noticed is you all have media in East African countries not really always cover what's going on in West African countries or um, Lucifone countries. That's another one which I think needs to be looked at. I think there is a space for an African media house which cuts across the entire continent. Um, that, to me, are the two big challenges. Talking advertising and marketing in Africa, Brad Ross, marketing customer and commercial director Coca-Cola West Africa, gave three important points to note in marketing in Africa. How can you be a global brand and local at the same time? And I think that's always going to be something to consider in your marketing communications and advertising strategy is how do you bring the values and the purpose of the global brand and mix it with the local relevance and culture in the country that you're operating within? And I think that's the balance in act that you always try and mm -hmm. establish. For me, I think there's three things that, that go with that. Firstly, it's about authenticity. I think you can't just jump into a culture and try to be something that you're not. Okay. So it's about earning your place at the table and it's about being relevant and authentic as a brand that's able to then talk about whatever it is that you're advertising or marketing. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's about your brand values, understanding what your brand stands for and then how you actually relate the brand values to that specific culture or context of the market that you're operating in. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, and, and very importantly, is the brand purpose. What does the brand stand for at a higher level? And how do you bring that purpose to life through the marketing and advertising work that you're doing that is relevant and, and, and local for the communities that you're operating within? Day two of the Speak for Africa conference focused on strategic corporate communications and reputation management and stakeholder relations, highlighting truth to power and politics and managing political communication in a post-truth era with speakers such as the Honourable Minister for Information, Ghana, Kojo Opong Nkrumah, who pointed out the importance of a listening government and how it can aid development. Managers uh, across Africa who may be following our conversation that you don't need to wait for the public to scream. And then very finally, the public PR practitioners have to be involved at the very top. If I take a cue from some of our conversations earlier, it doesn't help if they are sitting somewhere down the ladder and then the mess is created and you call them to come and clean up. I think it starts from our understanding of how we came to power. We came to power because 
uh, we spent some time trying to understand um, what the people really want. Our current president embarked, uh, I think, on about a one-year listening tour, going across the regions of the country, sitting with the people, and getting an understanding of what the consumer or the people wanted. And then we had to capture that into a platform or a manifesto uh, that gets the people to understand that this is an answer to a question that you have. Mm -hmm. And having won the mandate of the people overwhelmingly, we are clear in our minds that the people determine our fate. And therefore, whatever we are doing, whatever policy or program that we are rolling out, we must constantly be engaging with the people to have an understanding. Do the people like it? Do they hate it? How do you respond to that? And then take the necessary consequential action. So there are programs that we are running today that we are expanding because the people say they like it. So in, so in our mid-year budget, for example, we've asked for more resources to expand programs in agriculture and in infrastructure because the people want to see more of that. That's the feedback they give us. We've had to cancel some government programs, some particular tax handles and some other government programs because the people say, we don't want this. The luxury vehicle tax, uh, uh, the towing levy, for example, we've had to take them off the table because the people give us feedback that they don't want it. So when you have an understanding of the connection between yourself and the people, I think you always have to put them at the center of whatever you do. Also speaking about messaging and political communication, Ibim Seminitari, former commissioner for Information River State and former international journalist, said governments need to prioritize its citizens. The thing is, when you talk about communication, uh, you can't really wait, rule, rule out the fact that the people receiving the message have to be convinced of the message. Uh, and, and so it means that from the get-go, the planning includes the people. You see, when we want to go for elections, we think about what the people want to hear. And so if you're worried about what the people want to hear, then clearly your stay in government is dependent on how satisfied the people are. And if that is the case, then it's important that you're even getting feedback. And I think that one of the things we do not put a premium on is the communication aspect of our governance. And governance really, if you like it or not, has to take from communication. I mean, you've got to know that you've got to first be able to explain to the people what you're doing. You can't sit as Lord over them and not explain to them. Mm -hmm. And listening to the Honorable Minister from Ghana, you find a situation where there is listening going on and where there is a feedback mechanism that enables government to take a decision because you have seen the reaction of the people. We've got to understand that our clients are the people. The consumer is king. And in this instance, the people that we serve are king. And I use the words very advisedly. I use the word serve because that's what it should be. Now, if we realize that we serve the people, then the tendency for us to turn up our noses at them and not care how they feel will, you know, it, we will stop. We will then realize that they're a critical audience and we must, you know, it, it's almost like wooing a woman, if you want to use that word. You, 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 you ensure that you take the trouble mm -hmm. to convince her. We must see the people as critical enough for us to take the trouble. For centuries, Africa has decried how its stories are being told by the West and have criticised some of the truths and facts embedded in these stories. Speak for Africa Conference has created the forum for these concerns not only to be tabled, but solutions given as how best to tell our African story. For Post TV Africa, I am Mary Anna Cohn.